Hi, Raj Levy in the Philippines here. I've come across a couple of interesting things lately. And the one I want to talk about first is the old, the old crock. The old crock of Mozart, you know, Dr. Charles Mozart, that one. Um, and it came, it came to my notice that there is a guy on the internet called, um, tail called, it could be a woman, it's very difficult to tell from these names, you know, uh, who runs a, a blog called um, Survey Anon, in which the uh, autogynophilia is discussed. And it's quite clear that he has some, he or she, has some dubious notions about what autogynophilia is. And then just this week, in fact today, I got a very long conniption from some guy who basically made all the same mistakes as Moser, and I think a lot of these come from people like Serrano, you know, who, he's a, Serrano is just a barefaced liar, just dreadful, dreadful person. Anyway, the basic thing is that these people don't understand that autogynophilia is not about behaviours. I mean, I know that sounds weird, but it isn't about behaviours. And what they do then, what Charles Moser did and all these other people do, is they say, well, how can we identify which behaviours are autogynephilic, right? And then we say, well, if we see people displaying these behaviours, then those people must be autogynephilic. And, and this logic is just, it's just ridiculous, because it's not the behaviours that define autogynephilia at all. In fact, autogynephiles have just about every possible behaviour under the sun. It's that complicated. It's that varied, it's an incredibly strange, varied condition. What actually unites them, makes them all linked and understandable as one phenomenon, is the erotic target location error. If you don't have an erotic target location error, you don't have autogynephilia. And secondly, autogynephilia only occurs in gynephilic males. As Blanchard said, you have to be gynephilic in order to be autogynophilic. And he wasn't talking about lesbians, right? What he meant was you had to be a, a conventionally heterosexual male in order to be an autogynophile, right? So that's the first line that, that completely scuppers Moser because he was asking women. His, his premise was that if I ask women, you know, if I, I if I identify certain behaviors that, I've observed, that have been observed in autogynophiles and I find women doing them, then obviously autogynephilia is a normal woman female behaviour. It's complete bloody nonsense. It's absolute pish. It's just not true. Because you have to be a gynephilic male. You know, a woman looking at a mirror, think, thinking, hey, damn it, I'm pretty hot, is a woman looking in a mirror thinking she's pretty damn hot. A man looking in a mirror and thinking that he's a pretty hot woman is not the same thing. I don't know how this escapes these people. It's not the same thing. So these are big problems. The ETLE is not easy to diagnose. That's why Blanchard's instruments are actually quite long. They are, it requires normally asking a, a, a fairly complex questionnaire uh, to establish whether someone, and remember it's limited to people who are, uh, who are, who are seeking transition, they're seeking uh, gender, uh, genital reconstruction surgery. So it's, it's kind of, it's not a random sample at all, it's, it's a specific group. And then you ask them about their certain things and behaviour, and it's from these behaviours, it's not the behaviours themselves, but from these behaviours you get a clue as to what's going on in their heads. Now, the ETLE is an erotic target location error. What is that? What is that, Papa? Well, I'll tell you what it is. If you remember back, or if you're a parent, actually, this will be really obvious for you, but if you remember back to your own childhood and you didn't remember back that far, you'll remember, I'm sure, having had crushes. Now, supposing you're a guy like me, there probably was a little blonde girl, same age as you, you know, in the class, you were like, absolutely, you had this ridiculous crush on her, you know. That's normal. Everybody does that. That's absolutely normal. These aren't sexualized but they're kind of like a strange romantic thing that goes on in the head, you know? 
Now, children are not eroticized. I mean, little children know they've got bits, sexual parts, and they know they give them pleasure, but that's it. It's like sucking their thumb. You know, they don't actually think any more of it than that. It doesn't go any further. Uh, and they should just be left alone to do their thing, because they're not going to do any harm to anyone. As you get older, there's a point at which your crushes and the idea of sexual reward start to get linked together, right? Now, for most people, the crush is like, a, you know, a, an ideal girlfriend, you know, you've got this idea, blonde, blue eyes, whatever, you know, depending on what your culture is, um, you it could be blonde, blue, whatever, it doesn't matter, it's just your particular, that's the kind of girl you like. In your head, you know, and what you do is when you go around the world as you get older, and that starts to be linked to the idea of bonding and, and reward, you project that out into the world, okay? And, and when you see someone who matches it, you go, oh, oh, she's nice. She's very attractive, isn't she? She's pretty. And you might want to say, well, you know, perhaps, you know, would you like to go and can I buy you a Coca-Cola or something like that? That's absolutely normal. That's what everybody does, most people anyway. The, the, you project your inner ideal person out into the world and the people who match it, those are the ones that interest you. In autogynephilia, I mean, this is really simplistic, by the way, it's actually a, quite a complicated process, but that's basically it. In autogynephilia, for, for, for reasons that we're not entirely sure of, um, they could be environmental, but you know there is some evidence that it's, this could be have some congenital input anyway, um, some at least. When you come to that point of projecting the, the inner, that inner babe, right, onto the outside world, instead of that happening, it gets mapped onto the self, it gets mapped back onto you, right? Now that's an error, that's a location error. Your ideal target is not meant to be yourself, okay? It's just as simple as that. That's, that's an error. That's erroneous. Right? But it's very, very, very common. A lot of men have, you know, some level of partial autogynephilia, and often they just don't realise it. It's just that they enjoy camping it up sometimes, you know, that sort of thing. Doesn't mean anything. It's when it gets out of control that it becomes a problem. But the important part in diagnosing autogynephilia is understanding that link between the ideal sexual, the ideal partner and the self. The fact that these have become tied together. Instead of being projected out onto someone else, it's been flipped back onto you. It's complicated because most autogynephilic men will have, uh, are, are gynephilic too, you know, they're all gynephilic at base. And they will often have very attractive wives because, you know, again, they've got this, must have a really beautiful woman. And so they tend to, it's quite true, they tend to be uh, associated with very attractive women. The trouble is, as a lot of these women will say, that they, they're never really sure whether the men want to make love to them or to be them. And this is the problem with autogynephilia. So people like Moser and uh, this tail called person, and I will take that person up on some forum other than this where I can communicate directly, um, and the person who communicated with me today, you know, whose embarrassment I shall save, uh, you're not just wrong, you're, um, you're, you're part of the problem. You know, autogynephilia is an issue, and it can easily become a real disorder a full-blown disorder. It's not a convent, at least, I'm not going to use the word normal here, but it's certainly not a conventional human sexual focus, right? It's not at all conventional for people to be their own sexual targets. And even with narcissists, that's really quite unusual. I mean, they Although narcissism is a component of autogynephilia, obviously, because it's a narcissistic condition, it must be because it's focused on the self. Autogynephilia itself is, is actually quite rare, and it only happens in males. And it only happens in males because of this idea of the development of the ideal other, the ideal sexual partner, and the mapping of that back onto the self, which is the ETLE. 
if you don't have an ETLE, you do not have autogynephilia, right? That's really important. And these people are making things a lot more complicated than they, they do. I mean, I've, I've looked at uh, this uh, survey and on blog and I just, I mean, I'm just looking at the kind of things that uh, the person asks and says, you, you know, they haven't a clue. They really don't understand what autogynephilia is. They think it's a collection of behaviours. It's not. The behaviours are just symptoms. It's like, you know, you're coughing and sneezing. Well, that could be a lot of different things, you know. It could be anything from the bubonic plague to the common cold. You know, it, you can't just say, oh, oh, yeah, look, bubonic plague. It's ridiculous. You can't do that. That's not how it works. You actually have to understand the, the underlying motivation. And the underlying motivation in autogynephilia is the, the ETLE, the erotic target location error. Now, that does leave me open to the question, why can't women have that? One, and one easy answer, and it's a glib one that's very common, is that autogynephilia, the development of this ETLE, is um, a kind of paraphilia that is extremely rare in women, right? It's, it's measurably very rare. And when women do have it, if they have it, theirs would not be autogynephilia, right? That would just be lesbianism. You know, it's, 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 not, it's not the same thing. A, a woman who thinks that she makes an absolutely cracking woman is just being a little bit narcissistic. It's normal, you know. And let's be honest, there's plenty of women out there who are really drop-dead gorgeous, and yeah, I can imagine that they stand in front of the mirror and go, God made you beautiful, girl. And how could you blame them? How could you blame them for that? It's just normal, you know, it's not, they're not displaying any kind of a condition at all. They're just being women. The point is that you're talking here about men. When you're talking about autogynephiles, you're talking about men. You're not talking about women. You're talking about men doing it. And it should be absolutely bloody obvious, that to the, even to the most brain dead, that what might well be normal and natural and quite commonplace for women is not necessarily the soul for men. Really not. You know, men and women are not the same. And this idea of false, uh, false balance, false equivalency, which is, is, a, is a much beloved by feminists, by the way, it's total bunk. It's an absolute bag of lies. Men and women just are different. And in their propensity towards conditions like this, they're, they're markedly different. Now I know somebody's going to come up and say, ah, but what about all these young teenage girls, da da dee da dee da who turn transition into men and da-da-da. And actually what that is, is another condition that Blanchard specified, which he called pseudo-homoeroticism, in which they are attracted to the idea of being gay men, but with male partners. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know it's complicated, but it's not autogynephilia. It's not. It's fascinating. It's a very interesting thing. I think, unfortunately, it's having some very, well, very unfortunate consequences. I think that a lot of girls' lives are being ruined because of this. Um, and I think it's something people should really be very careful with. But it's not autogynephilia, and it's not the inverse of autogynephilia. It's nothing to do with it at all. It's a kind of social contagion, which is to do with ideas of self and society, rather. It's a social issue rather than a sexual one. And the thing about genuine gender dysphoria is, now I, I understand that these girls, they feel very, or don't if you want trans men, they feel very strongly about what they are. But it's still a social condition. It's not really a sexual one. Whereas, you know, conventional sexual inversion, HSDS, that's obviously, obviously sexual. It, it just couldn't be anything else. And the same is true of AGP. It's very, very strongly sexualized. I, I know AGP people say, oh, I'm not sexual, I'm not wrong, I'm just, uh, they're bloody liars. You know, they, they don't, I think that the problem is that, you know, you get, you get autogynophiles everywhere. You get them here. And you should ask Stam about them sometimes, because she's got some absolutely hair-raising tales to tell about, because she's, you know, she's really small and pretty, and she's basically an autogynophile's wet dream. And, I mean, they're just all over her. <laughs> I've watched them do it. I'm just going, oh, steady on, that's my girlfriend. You know, it's true, it's true, you know. It's true. Don't believe those lies about there's no bloody autogynophiles in, in Asia. They're all over the damn place. Anyway, to, to recap, autogynephilia is dependent on ETLE, right? 
If you don't have an ETLE, no autogynephilia. If you don't have, if you're not gynephilic, you can't be autogynephilic. It's just basic, you know. You can't. It's, that's just impossible. First, you have to be gynephilic. So when somebody like uh, this tail called person says he asks gay men if they were a display autogynephilic behaviors, well, no, they're not because they're not gyno bloody philic. They're gay men. I mean, for goodness sake, they're androphilic. <laughs> You know, do you not, these people not get the, 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 the utter density of the, the, the absurdity of the logic they're implying here? Well, they should do, because it's absolutely ridiculous. It's just totally, it's nonsense. Anyway, that's it for just now. We will do some more later. Bye-bye.